Welcome to Norwich Miles, the Lord Mayor's Lectures. I'm Professor Tim Connell, Chairman of the Gresham Society and a Fellow of Gresham College here in the City of London. I'm honoured to have with us today uh, Alderman Professor Michael Manelli and Michael, could you perhaps tell us more about the Knowledge Miles and how they fit into your plan for the year? Well, Tim, uh, thanks very much for the introduction um, and uh, thanks for having me online today on our series together, which yeah. I'm enjoying enormously. Um, I'm in my, uh, believe it or not, this is the end of my 10th week as Lord Mayor, uh, so just over two months into the job, and I'm loving it. Uh, and the Knowledge Miles is, an, is a very important component of what we're trying to achieve here at, at Mansion House. Uh, as you're well aware, uh, these have been curated by you and the Gresham Society uh, with the assistance of Zian on production. And I think it's really amazing. What we're trying to do is to showcase the city's potential as an intellectual powerhouse. And that's all part of my theme of Connect to Prosper. In fact, I brought you here the little kind of fold-out we have on Connect to Prosper, showing kind of the entire program. And Knowledge Miles is pulling that program together with an exciting series of over 100 online lectures celebrating the intellectual depth of our city. Uh, so I'm very proud of it. I think this is probably a, a good point to remind people that part of uh, achieving this was recognizing that we have uh, within just uh, two miles of where we're sitting uh, something like 40 learned societies, seven institutions of higher education, and 130 research institutes. Uh, people see, uh, I think sometimes forget UCL is as big as Oxford and Cambridge combined and is rated fifth in the world. So if you're shaving hairs, but that's all right here in the City of London, and that is very much what the Knowledge Mile series is doing, showcasing, bringing that up, and making the connections, the intellectual connections that are so important for London. And of course that's been very helpful for us because we've got lots of institutions and people to draw on to uh, have a whole series of lectures linked into your plan for the year. So um, what do you like most about the series so far? Well, I, it, would, it would be terrible if I were to pick out <laughs> uh, from the ones that we had, you know, my, my favourite. Uh, what, what I think really distinguishes this series is just the this, this sheer variety. I, I've written down here, we have law, engineering, history, psychology, finance, literacy, etc. Uh, and we've got uh, many, many things forthcoming on religion, chemistry, science, music, arts. Uh, it, it's really fantastic. Um, I can, I guess, pick out the, the person who started it all and that was uh, Nick Vinyl of the Bar Council. And in a way, he did absolutely the right thing. He laid out the foundation of what makes the city great, and that is, in fact, the rule of law. So I thought that was an extremely strong start. Yes, that was a really good session, I must admit. Um, now, we'd like to remind everyone that uh, the lectures are recorded, they're uploaded, they're available on the Gresham Society website and on knowledgemiles.net. And, uh, well, what about the actual speakers? Um, well, we've got an array of speakers. You know, what we're really after in Knowledge Miles is knowledge. Uh, but, but knowledge does sometimes correlate with uh, fame, celebrity, and position. Um, so, you know, I'd pick out two. Uh, I mentioned Nick Vin Vin Vinyl before. Uh, Andy Haldane, uh, CEO of the Royal Society of Arts, and, of course, uh, formerly at the Bank of England. Uh, Dr. Thomas Davis, who's the Chief Technology Officer at Oxford Sigma. So there are a variety of great names. But what we're most after is expertise. Uh, yes, of course, quality before quantity, but what about the numbers? Uh, what sort of take-up are we getting at the moment? Oh, numbers? Oh, wow. Uh, from, from, from the statistics I've been shown, we're getting something like a 1,000 views per event on, on, the, on the web. It, it's an amazing outreach program here, which is exciting. Um, so far, in two and a half months, we've had 14 lectures, and the pace is going to up a bit as we move towards the end of the year. We had that sort of a seasonal break. Uh, average registrations uh, have, have been, you know, fantastic. But people, of course, are looking at them afterwards. So online, we're getting about 174 people registered for the event itself, which is typically 20 minutes, uh, followed by 20 minutes of Q&A. Uh, we're fully booked uh, to the end of May with uh, 28 more lectures, and we're hoping to have uh, another 15 this side of uh, midsummer. So it's all going apace. Uh, and what I found fantastic about the results was the engagement. Uh, the system that we use allows us to measure interactivity uh, in the sessions, particularly on the Q&A, uh, and that's enormously high. Uh, over 80% of the people who attend stay till the very, very end of the lecture and are asking questions, so it's really, really dynamic. Well, even better than that, I found when uh, I've been convening that actually we have people joining in time for the questions and answers. They've actually missed the lecture, but never mind. <laughs> they can always follow up afterwards. <laughs> now, uh, one of your aims is to highlight the 
uh, work of the livery companies here in the city of London. It's a very city sort of feature. Can you tell us a bit more about the livery companies and the way we're working there? Well, we, we have a 111 uh, 11 full worshipful companies, uh, livery companies. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a handful of guilds and companies moving towards livery status. Um, and we also have a couple of things like the City Livery Club uh, and that. So there's about 120 organizations in this network. And this network, out of our working population, about 615,000, over 50,000 people belong to that. So nearly 10% of the city are involved with livery in, in some way. Uh, I myself, and I know you, are both, are both proud liverymen also. Uh, but these livery companies have traditionally done commerce, community, and charity. And I'm afraid in the modern era, people tend to sort of say, well, take the charity. They apply for the grant. They, 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 they want the philanthropic giving. But the commerce bit is equally strong. Uh, I, I would pick on um, uh, things like uh, the Skinners, the Company of Salters, the Water Conservators, the International Bankers, just to give some idea of the variety. Um, but they're very, very active. Um, so let me, uh, let me give you an example of the Salters. The Salters are actually very, very involved in chemistry. That, that is what they do. Um, and they have been giving a great series, and I'm looking forward. In fact, I think it's, uh, yes, Tom Welton, who's a professor at Imperial College, uh, is going to give the Worshipful Company of Salters lecture on sustainable chemistry and how it is contributing to achieving the sustainable development goals. I mean, that's, that's fascinating. And it goes on and on like that. So we are showcasing the talent in the livery. And the livery has been very helpful at either providing one of their members to speak or finding a speaker, and also on making sure that relevant communities are informed of lectures that might interest them. Yes, and of course the other interesting thing is you mentioned a number of companies. The Salter has been one of the ancient companies and water conservators obviously being fairly modern. And of course, a lot of people see the livery companies as being very historic, but don't realize the extent to which they're forward-looking and getting involved in innovation. And I think you said at the beginning, this is one of the things you wanted to highlight. Very much so. Uh, and if you take sort of the modern companies, the water conservators is a very good example. My dear friend, uh, Professor Carolyn Roberts, is going to be talking about protecting London from floods. Uh, she's going to be examining the Thames barrier and its importance. Uh, and what the estimates are of its continuing lifetime and what would be needed to replace it in the future. So they're very much looking ahead, uh, and these lectures are meant to truly deal with topics of today, no matter whether the company is young or old. <laughs> now, can you tell us a bit more about what we might expect in the next few months? Well, I, I think as, as you're looking ahead, I've mentioned uh, Caroline and I've mentioned uh, Tom's lectures forthcoming, but I think what you're going to see is yet more continuing variety. And in fact, I would suggest that if anybody wants to make some suggestions of lectures to be held, yes. uh, please, uh, on the website, you can get in touch with the team there. Uh, but yes, we're, we're, we're looking forward to, to it. Um, beneath all of this, though, there is a theme. It's not just kind of an intellectual grab bag. Um, I've structured Connect to Prosper as celebrating the knowledge miles of our square mile, which I very much see as the world's coffee house. And as part of that, of course, I've said, well, you should be going to your coffee house to solve your big problems. And those are definitely the Sustainable Development Goals, of which there are 17. And I'm not going to enumerate them, uh, but I would point out we've got uh, really three clubs. So very much prosperity in the planet, so economics and climate change. Uh, people and possibility, uh, very much about uh, looking forward in terms of how we grow our societies, how we increase our, our, our wealth, and prosperity and productivity, which is really looking at the hard economics. So there are three clubs there of you know, kind of people, planet, and productivity. Uh, that I do think underline this. And in many ways, that's again in line with that livery refrain I gave you earlier, commerce, community, and charity. Yes, no, that's uh, very interesting. And also, I think that brings the series very much up to date, not only with regard to the City of London, but does take us out into the world's coffee house, yes. which I think is something you rather like. Yes. I think coffee houses are a great part of the City of London's history, actually, so mm -hmm. something we're reviving in a funny sort of way. Now, um, to round off, I'd like to remind everyone that the lectures will be running through to the end of your mayoral year, so that's the beginning of November. Most of the lectures will be either at 11 o'clock or 3, and they can be found on the Gresham Society website, knowledgemiles.net, and um, the questions and answers will be available as well as the lectures themselves. So I think there's quite a lot for people to follow up on. So thank you, Michael, for this and explaining your plan for the year. And I'd like to remind everybody that what we have to do is to connect to Prosper. So thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Tim. And uh, thanks to the team at Gresham Society indeed. and at Sien. Indeed. Thank you very much, Michael.